joined us now to talk about the investigation. Mark, thanks for your time. Uh, good morning, Morella. I'm sure you've seen now that Globe and Mail report that the suspect had a hit list, a target list. How does that change things? Are you surprised by that? I'm not surprised by it. And it, 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 it changes things in terms of the police being able to sort of follow a motive or a state of mind or a rationale for all of this. When it comes to killers like this, there are two kinds. There are organized killers and disorganized killers. And we have seen over the last couple of days that you know, this shooter obviously fell into the organized killer category, uh, given his propensity uh, to uh, uh, collect these vehicles and fix them up. And he obviously obtained uh, uh, an authentic RCMP uniform. So this was planned. It was deliberate and uh, and, and and well well played out by him. Uh, so he's an organized guy, so a list would not surprise me at all. But okay. that will help the police in terms of identifying uh, the motive. Okay, take me back to Saturday night. I'm presuming this list was found sometime Saturday night or in the overnight hours. You see that list as an officer. What do you do? Well, we don't know when the list was found. But if, if, if say, the list was found during that time period that he was uh, out driving around and, and, and committing other murders in, in his 100-kilometer uh, trek, yeah, you know, you look at that list, first of all, you don't know what the list is. We, we don't know if it has a title on it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's easy to say it was a list of names, um, but there may be no context to it. But if you have the time, if, if you have some background and some some evidence, some information of investigative value that, that leads you to believe that these people are possible targets, then those are the people you contact immediately. Wow. Okay, we also have big questions about weapons. We don't know at this point what kind of weapons were used. RCMP has not confirmed that as yet. But we know he had no license for weapons. So how difficult is it to get your hands on weapons if you aren't going through the proper process? It's not difficult. And you and I have talked about this over the years uh, on this program, that if somebody is really hell-bent on obtaining an illegal firearm, it is not that difficult in this country. Uh, it's a question of going to somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody else, and you'll get your hands on a weapon of, of your choice. Um, we don't know what kind of weapons he had right now, whether they were all uh, handguns, semi-automatic, or whether he had some long guns. And part of the reason is that the Special Investigation Response Team, the CERT team, which is the the separate agency that looks after investigations where people die at the hands of police. They're conducting that investigation, and whatever weapons he had at the time that he was shot and killed by the police are in the custody of CERT. So we don't know that information yet. Probably the RCMP doesn't as well. But whatever weapons have been recovered that have been related to him, they're going to have to go back and find out whether they were stolen from uh, from break and enters, from gun stores, whether they've ever, ever been reported stolen, whether they were obtained some, somehow in the United States. That's one of the tangents of investigation that's going to have to take place now. Okay, let me hit on a point you already brought up about being an organized killer versus being a disorganized killer, because I think it plays into the whole emergency alert and why one may or may not have been issued uh, in time. If they thought, and I mean police, that they had a list of potential targets and that the suspect had not left the area and set up that perimeter, would they have thought, would it have been natural or logical to think that if they had a list, it was contained and perhaps that this person wasn't going to go out and randomly shoot people? Because we know that he knew some of the people he, he targeted, but he didn't know others is what it looks like. And in that way, it presents not only as organized, but also disorganized. Well, there's a lot of ifs, yeah. and, and, we, and, and we don't have the answers to the ifs. What the RCMP are doing, and hopefully they will uh, you know, impart that onto the general public and the media, is a timeline. You know, we're, we're hearing about when things started and when when tweets went out and, and Facebook alerts, things of that nature. Um, we're getting some kind of information now as to when the fires were started, when bodies were discovered, when when the RCMP constables, Constable Stevenson was shot. All of this is part of a timeline. And it's it's going to it's going to come down to the RCMP, RCMP saying, look, here's what we knew at this particular time and here's what we did. Here's what we didn't know and found out later. That will answer some of our questions. That will probably give some, some rationale to them as to why they, they didn't get a provincial alert out. I mean, we have talked about this before. 
this was a perfect time. This was a perfect scenario for that. But you have to have some information. So it's about what the RCMP knew, when they knew it, and what they did with that information. That is a big question that we don't have the answers to, and that's going to take some time. And we may not like the answers at the end of the day, Morella. We, we may find out that the ball was dropped somewhere along the way, not being able to find someone to authorize the provincial alert or the wording for it, and whether ours were lost in that time period. We're just going to have to wait and see. On that note, Mark Randelson, I will leave the conversation there, sir, but thanks for weighing in on this. Thanks for joining us. And stay healthy, Marilla. You too. All of virtual